Welcome to Loving Out Loud, how to improve communication, sustain sexual passion, and create lasting love relationships. My name is Paula Smith, and I'm your summit host. Loving Out Loud is about loving fiercely and showing up in a different way to create a new reality, one that allows you to access your deepest truths and desires. No matter where you are in the love and life cycle, Loving Out Loud is a prescription for awakening your heart, your mind, and your body to a deeper consciousness and a more authentic and intentional self-expression. Welcome to Loving Out Loud. My guest today on Loving Out Loud is Arielle Ford. Arielle has spent the past 25 years living and promoting consciousness through all forms of media. She is the author of the international bestseller, The Soulmate Secret, Manifest the Love of Your Life with the Law of Attraction. Arielle has been called the Cupid of Consciousness and the fairy godmother of love. Her show, Big Love with Arielle Ford, is heard on Contact Talk Radio, where she shares the secrets to finding and keeping love and making life a spiritual adventure. She lives in La Jolla, California, with her husband and soulmate, Brian Hilliard, and their feline friends. This is our recent conversation. So, Loving Out Loud welcomes Arielle Ford today. Arielle, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Paul. I'm happy to be with you. Yeah, you were on my last summit, The Relationship Revolution, and now we're Loving Out Loud today. Hey, why not? <laughs> yeah. So, Arielle, you wrote a book, Wabi Sabi Love. Can you tell me what is Wabi Sabi? Yeah, Wabi Sabi is an ancient Japanese aesthetic that honors all things old, worn, imperfect, impermanent, um, rustic, you know, driftwood is wabi-sabi. And wabi-sabi love is about learning to honor and love the beauty and imperfection in yourself Mm -hmm. and especially that of your mate. Because as you know, none of us are perfect. Although we live our lives as if perfection is an attainable thing, you know, uh, we want our kids to be perfect, we want the perfect career, career. HGTV wants us to have perfect homes, but I think the word perfection needs to be changed to pure fiction. Pure fiction, wow. It doesn't exist. That, that may be a, your next book or the book after that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so Wabi Sabi Love is really about finding beauty and perfection in imperfection and finding ways to shift your perception about the things that your partner does that drive you crazy. Wow. So rather than trying to bitch and moan and complain and trying to get them to change, you can begin to have fun with the weird crazy things that they do. So it sounds like there is some sort of background for this book. So how did you come to write it? You know, it was one of those crazy things. I first learned about Wabi Sabi 30 years ago. I used to do publicity for a lot of art galleries and I was always reading art trade publications and I read an article one day about this Japanese concept of Wabi Sabi and it happened to be on a day where I got out to lunch and I spilled spaghetti all over myself. Oh, wow. And while I'm reading this article about finding beauty and imperfection, I looked down at my skirt and saw this big stain. And I thought, well, what's Wabi Sabi about that? Mm. Like, what's the new story I could make up about what a sloppy eater I am? Mm-hmm. So I decided in that moment that this stain was proof that I have such a huge appetite for life and for food that when I eat, I'm going to get my food on me and on you. Yeah. And I decided in that moment to stop being a perfectionist mm-hmm. because it was just, you know, it was just never going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I first started using Wabi Sabi on myself. How could I have more fun 
with the crazy, strange things that I do. And then after I got married and I found out that the guy I married wasn't perfect and he was doing things that would annoy me, I began to wonder, well, if I were going to have a wabi-sabi solution, you know, what would it be? So I'll give you just a simple example. Okay. So I'm one of those people that when I squeeze the toothpaste, let's pretend this is toothpaste, okay. I like to squeeze it from the bottom right. and roll it up and right. keep it all neat and clean. Yeah. I married a guy who likes to do the mangled from the middle thing. <laughs> so every time I'd walk in the bathroom, my neatly rolled tube of toothpaste now was scrunched in the middle. And I'd always say to him, you know, why can't you just do this right? Why can't you just squeeze it from the bottom? Mm -hmm. And he would look at me like I was totally out of my mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you talking about? And nothing changed. This went on for a couple of years. But what I began to notice was every time I saw the tube of toothpaste, I would have a negative thought about this man that I love so much. Ah. Like, why can't he do it right? What's the matter with him? Why does he have to mess up my tube of toothpaste? Mm -hmm. So one day I started thinking, there's got to be a wabi-sabi solution to this. What could it be? And my first thought was, well, I'll buy another tube of toothpaste, and he can have his, and I'll have mine, right? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, no, because I'll see his, mm -hmm. and I'll still have this judgmental thought. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding this tube of toothpaste in my hand, just like praying, like, what's good about you? What's mm -hmm. good? Wow. And then it came to me, and it was like, oh, my God. I married a guy who brushes his teeth. Wow. Yeah. And then suddenly, this mangled tube of toothpaste represented that I had a guy with good dental hygiene. We were going to grow old together, and he'd still have teeth. And it shifted everything. Does he still squeeze from the middle 17 years later? Yes, he does. Yeah. Now when I see it, I laugh. Yeah. Do I still redo it? Yes, I do. I'm compulsive. I can't help it. But it no longer makes me crazy. Yeah. Wow an amazing story. So Ariel, so it's almost a disease in this culture of perfectionism, right? So do you believe that being a perfectionist in a relationship is a dead end to happiness? And if so, can you tell us why? Yeah, it is, it, it's a proven fact. You know, it's, it's not the big things that tear people apart. It's the day-to-day -day little things that build up over time. You know, you don't take the garbage out. You leave wet towels on the floor. You never close the refrigerator door all the way. Whatever it is, until someday you hit this breaking point of 75 things that are driving you crazy and you can't take it anymore. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Yes, if somebody exactly. has an affair, you go to therapy and you know you need work and you work on it and you find a way to get over it or you don't. Right. But the 75 things that have come up, drive you crazy. So what they've proven, there was a, a researcher at the University of Buffalo did this study on couples who wear rose-colored glasses. Yeah. And what she discovered is the couples who consciously choose to put on the rose-colored glasses have longer, happier, more satisfying marriages mm -hmm. because they're always looking for what's right, right instead of looking for what's wrong. Right. So with wabi-sabi love, what you're looking for is, okay, you do this. You're pointing your finger. You do this. But it's my problem. I'm the one who's going crazy, not you. Yeah. And it's only because we were raised in different households with different ways of doing things. It's not like your partner woke up this morning and said, I really want to annoy Paula today. How could I drive Paula crazy? Nobody wakes up like that, right? right? We all wake up the same way, which is, I want to be loved for exactly who I am. So it's our job as the annoyed person to make up a new story about the behavior, and I can give you tons of examples of this. Yep. How about just one? Because I love the whole idea of new storying. Well, that. one of my favorite ones just happened two weeks ago. I was, I was teaching at the Sun Valley Wellness Festival, and I had about 100 people in the room, and I put them in groups of three. And I said to them, I want each of you to share one thing your partner does that makes you the craziest, the thing you don't think there's a solution to. And then you're going to brainstorm together for the new story. Mm -hmm. So when they were done, I had them you know, raise their hand. Who's got a story to share? And this woman, Sandra, says, uh, my husband travels two weeks every month. He works out of state. Mm -hmm. So the two weeks that he's gone, it's my house, and it's neat, and it's clean, and it's orderly, and I love it. And the two weeks a month when he's home, it's dirty and it's messy and I can't wait for him to leave because he's such a slob. 
So one of the partners in her triad said to her, do you have a dog? And she said, yes. She said, do you love your dog? Yes, of course I love my dog. Does your dog shed? Yes, my dog sheds. What do you do when the dog sheds? Well, of course I vacuum up after him. Mm. She said, do you understand that your husband is just shedding? Wow. Wow. And at that moment, wow. she got that it's just her job to clean up after him. Okay. Just like the dog can't help that he sheds, mm. her husband does the same thing. And it shifted everything for her. After 20 years of marriage, she got, oh, no big deal. He mm. sheds. He sheds. He should. So one of the core principles of Wabi Sabi is generosity, a generous spirit, or one right. of the core codes. Why did you choose that? Or well, you know, um, I grew up in a household with a father and a brother who were football fanatics, and I absolutely hate football. So I swore to myself I would never marry a man who watched football. I just can't stand the sound of crashing helmets and whistles blowing and all that noise and people getting hurt and carried off the field. Mm. I ended up marrying a guy who's a basketball fanatic. Ah. And I didn't know a thing about basketball except that, you know, every once in a while it was on all the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to miss a lot of our life together if I don't develop some connection to this crazy sport. Mm. So I said to Brian one day early on in our marriage, I said, if I were going to sit down and watch 15 minutes of a game with you, what should I, when, when should I do this? He said, well, the last 15 minutes. So I sat down, I watched the last 15 minutes of the game, I was bored to death, I was drifting, I was thinking about where we would go for dinner, anything except watching these guys running up and down the court. So then the next day I thought, well, that was useless, let me try again. So the second time, I noticed that one of the guys making all the scores was the shortest guy on the team. And I said, well, who is that guy? And he said, oh, his name's Avery Johnson. I said, he looks kind of short. He goes, oh, yeah, he is. He's the shortest guy, but he's the fastest and he's the best. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I decided from now on, I'm going to watch the last 15 minutes of a game with him, but I'm going to root for the short guys. <laughs> and that's it. how I learned to love, I love it. basketball. And then Brian, without me saying, well, look what I did for you, I never actually said I'm doing this for you because I was really doing it for our relationship. Yeah. You know, we had this sort of differences on the kinds of movies that we like. He likes uh, documentaries, film noir, really heavy, deep kind of movies. Mm -hmm. My favorite movie is Legally Blonde. Okay, so that should tell you. I like slapstick, silly, stupid movies. Yeah. But after, you know, after I sort of developed this love for basketball, suddenly I noticed he would say to me, I love the sound of your laughter so much, I'll go to any kind of movie with you. Wow. Yes. So that's what happens when you develop a generous heart. You don't have to hit someone over the head with it. Right. It just becomes this dance that you do right. together. Right. Very beautiful. Um... So I'm thinking now, Ariel, you know, we have a 50% divorce rate in this country, right? Yes. So does Wabi Sabi work with couples who are, you know, pretty damaged, um, badly damaged? You know, it has. If, mm -hmm. if there's, you know, serious pathology or betrayal, yeah. mm -hmm. I always suggest you get professional help. I'm not a therapist or a coach. So I think if it's that level, mm -hmm. but if not, it's really about looking to see, well, what is it that I'm most complaining about and where can I be personally responsible for first making myself happy? Mm -hmm. You know, because people come into relationships thinking it's the other person's job to make them happy. Right. And it's not. It's our job to make ourselves happy. Mm -hmm. So I have seen this work on all levels of relationships and really... The, the biggest piece of it is awareness and consciousness. You know, you chose this person for a reason. You know, our, our wonderful friend Harville Hendricks always says, um, you know you're in the right relationship if it starts off as a dream come true and rapidly devolves into your worst nightmare. Right. You know, because we're here to, to learn from each other and to teach each other and to heal each other's wounds. So just because you're butting heads doesn't mean things are bad and wrong. It just means there's stuff I need to work on and maybe stuff you need to work on and my best advice to couples is if you can commit to using your relationship 
together and make your choices and decisions based on is this good for the relationship as, as opposed to is this good for me or is this good for you. Right. Then you're coming from a place of power and togetherness and strength mm -hmm. and you have each other's back. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's about. It's not about butting heads. It's about joining together and then looking outward and saying, how can we create a beautiful life that not only inspires us, but inspires the world? Right, right. And you sounded so much like Harvard. You know, he's on this summit, he and Helen. Oh, they are. I just adore them. They are, yeah. They're just, they're so brilliant, and they're, and they're so vulnerable in their sharing of their own personal journey. Yeah. They had me in tears last time I interviewed them. Uh, they're just amazing. I, I... I don't think there's a couple out there that should go through life without experiencing their work. Right. Absolutely. I totally agree, which is why I became an amago therapist. Yeah, they're um, brilliant. Just yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant. They so get it. They, they, they so get it. Yeah. Um, so um, you were talking about how we're responsible for our own happiness yeah. in, in, a, in a, a relationship. Seems a little counterintuitive, right? Can you talk a little bit more about that? I think sure. you alluded Actually, to it. I've got a great story about that. Um, okay. One thing most people don't know about Michelle and Barack Obama is about 12 years ago, they almost got divorced. Uh, Barack was telling his grandmother that all Michelle ever did was complain, and Michelle was telling her mother that Barack was just never home. He was working on his career. She felt overworked, overburdened. They had tremendous debt from their Ivy League law school degrees. She had a big corporate job, two young children at home. Mm -hmm. She felt out of shape, unseen, unheard, unloved. They were miserable. Mm -hmm. And one morning she woke up about 5 in the morning, and all she could think about was she wanted to go to the gym and work out. And then she was thinking, oh, but the girls are going to get up. They have to have breakfast. And then as Brock was snoring next to her, she thought, you know, this guy was editor of Law Review. He can figure out breakfast. <laughs> and she slipped out of bed and she went to the gym. Mm -hmm. And while she was working out, she had this epiphany, what I call a wabi-sabi love epiphany. Mm -hmm. And she realized that she had been waiting for Barack to make her happy. Oh. And she knew that it was up to her to make herself happy. So she went home, and when she got there, the girls were at the kitchen table having cereal, and she made this announcement that there were new rules for the Obama household. From that day forward, she was going to allow her mother to start helping her. Her mother had been volunteering. Let me drive the girls to school. Let me do the grocery shopping. So she was going to take her mother up on that offer. She told Barack that every night that he was in town, dinner would be served at the family table at 6.30. He was to be there. Every Sunday was family day, no matter what, and Thursday nights were date night. Wow. And that turned their entire marriage around because she realized that it was up to her to do it. And as we know, regardless of what your politics are, you have to admit they're a pretty great couple. Absolutely. Absolutely. What an amazing story. Yeah, it's a true story. It's a true story. Any final thoughts, Ariel? This has been so enlightening. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I would say that what's really missing for a lot of couples is the fun factor. Mm -hmm. And that's what Wabi Sabi Love offers. You know, you could even brainstorm together. You know, it's like, like my husband likes to watch news. If he, did, if he never slept, he'd watch it 24 hours a day. Not only does he like to have the news channels on, he likes it on really loud. And I'm a highly sensitive person. I don't like loud noises, and I'm not a political junkie. But that's his thing. So mm -hmm. it used to drive me crazy that every room I would walk into, the TV was on. And no matter how much I would complain about it, it wouldn't change. And then one day I came home, and all four TVs were on really loud, and he wasn't even home. Wow. But I saw the remote control, and I knew in that moment, that was for me. That was for All me. I have to do is pick it up and turn the volume down or turn the TV off. And it changed everything. So now if I walk into a room and he's not watching the TV, I just turn it off yep. instead of being annoyed. Right, right. It's little right. simple things that you can do for yourself mm -hmm. rather than having these evil negative thoughts. Right. You know, my husband's the worst guy on the planet. Because he's not. Right, you right. married him for a reason. He's a good guy. Great. Wow. Ariel Ford, thank you so much for being oh, loving so out welcome. loud. This is just truly magnificent. I'm not sure. Are you offering a free gift? 
I think so. um, you know, you. Um, if you go to wabisabilove.com forward slash gifts, wabisabilove.com forward slash gifts, I have a free five part video series you can get there. Oh, thank you so much. Ariel Ford, thank you for being on Loving Out Loud. Love and hugs to you and safe travels tomorrow. Thank you so much. Great to see you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.